Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading. Finally, we have the public beta for uh, DaVinci Resolve 12. Now, this is a very exciting release because frankly, I think this is the first release of Resolve that I can actually use as my NLE and actually edit inside Resolve, which is gonna be huge because usually one of the most complicated things about Resolve is, is getting your footage into Resolve after you've finished the editing. So this is gonna be extremely exciting. However, in this video, I'm gonna be discussing the uh, changes mainly to the interface and the new stuff that was added uh, into uh, Resolve. So let's start. Now, when you first look at the new Resolve, the biggest change you'll notice is that you don't have uh, the curves uh, here. Remember, before here we had uh, four curves, the YRGB curves. And I think what's happening is that Resolve is going into a new direction. They're trying to make Resolve more compatible with smaller screen devices, so it will be available on more and more devices. So the first thing here is that we have one big uh, curve. This happens to be the Y, and you can click here for the R, G, and B curves. So for example, if I click on any point here in the uh, image, notice that I have these points here. Now I have four different points on what looks like one curve at the moment, but this circle represents the current curve that has been selected. So currently I'm choosing the Y. If I go to the R, now the circle became red and it's on the um, you know red curve and I can go to GB. So I can simply control the curves from here. The second thing you'll notice is that they've joined uh, the soft clip with the curves. So now soft clip is just a part of curves here. The second thing for me was that there is a dedicated reset button. Now we've always had reset buttons with Resolve, but now it's just one click before you had to go through two clicks to reset anything. Now there's uh, this reset button here. You can just click it and the whole thing will reset. The second most important change for me is now you can dock your scopes. So if you come to the right here, this is your keyframe editor just like before. However, now we have this new icon here. And if we click it, now we have our scopes docked. You can view only one scope at a time, so you can either choose histogram, parade, vector scope, whatever. And if you want to see multiple scopes, maybe and move them to another screen, you can click on this button here to expand your scopes. And now you have the same old scopes. Notice that once we uh, undocked our scopes, the scopes icon disappeared from here. So how do you get the scopes back? Well, it's very simple. You, you simply close your scopes uh, window here just by clicking on the X button. And now we have the scopes uh, signed back here again. And one of the changes to the interface is that you don't have the dots before. Before, if you wanted to move between curves, you have different dots and you can click on the dots to move from one curve to another. However, there is only a drop down menu now. So these are the available curves, hue versus hue, saturation, low mount, you know, sat versus sat, the same standard curves. So I just came to this uh, curve here and I'm just going to click anywhere to create a point. Now I can take this point up or down, just change it however I want. Now, if I come to the drop down menu here, I have editable splines. So I'm just going to click on it. And now I can even control the same point in many different ways to add, you know, contrast in very uh, targeted areas. Now, this is much better. You see, now there's way more control with curves now than before which is really great. Okay, let's reset. Now, if you come to the uh, wheel section, you'll notice now that we don't have the points here, but we still have our same primary uh, wheels, primary bars, and log controls. One of the nice things is that when you change any of the wheels parameters, now you get this representation here showing you the um, the current uh, gain control uh, you know, for your wheel. So now I know that my gamma is down. Let me reset the entire image. So I can simply just come to gamma here, increase gamma. And just by looking at the wheels again, I know that I've increased the gamma here. So the next thing is that you'll notice that there are two numbers here, one and two. Now, remember before uh, we had some color options you know, for recovering uh, highlights and shadows uh, and, and the color match tab. The options are still available. They just moved to the uh, primary wheels now. So if I click on one here, now these are my same old controls, but if I click on two, now I have the options like of highlights, shadows, color boost and, and mid-tone details that used to be available through the uh, color match tab. Now they're available through the primary wheels tab, which is great. It's, it's definitely a more streamlined way of working. And the next thing is that if we come to the top here, we can choose different ways. Like I can hide the gallery now and, uh, you know, I can just click on this button to make the timeline appear or disappear. I can show or hide clips, which is, I think, is a part of an overall effort to, you know, to make DaVinci uh, more compatible with more devices. Now, I definitely definitely noticed um, that the new DaVinci is way faster than the old one. My device is definitely more responsive, um, which is a nice touch. They've improved somehow the, uh, the performance of DaVinci, which is great. 
Then you have these two buttons on the top right. So the first one will show or hide nodes. So if I click here, the nodes are hidden now. And if I click, I get it back. This is for the open FX um, section. Now you can uh, open it easily by clicking on this button here. And open effects are simply third party effects that you can add to resolve the same way you would install a plugin on Premiere Pro. Okay, so you would just click here and find all of your effects and you can simply drag your effects to your nodes and just control uh, the effects the way, you, the way you would do normally. So let me reset. And finally here we have the lightbox button. So if I click on, on lightbox here, this is the lightbox view. However, one of the things that I'm missing um, is that before I used to be able to control the colors from down here, it seems that there is no way to do that at the moment. I'm not sure if this is something that's gonna stick in or just that this is a beta version and this is going to change in the future. I really have no idea. So let's go back by clicking on lightbox. One more thing also is that setting used to be on the bottom left. Now we just moved to the bottom right now. We have the same settings. It just on the bottom right and you have the same keyboard mapping options and you can simply click here to choose your uh you know your keyboard shortcuts you can get the keyboards from adobe premiere pro final cut pro x or avid media composer which is great it's just going to make the transition way easier now we've had this in version 11 but it's always nice to have a keyboard customization so cancel now next we have the tracker and the tracker have a, a really nice revamped look that is just way easier to read now you have the options here to decide what do you want to track like pan tilt zoom rotate or 3d and you can simply track forward or backwards and you still have the option to stabilize here uh, the new thing is that now you have a 3d tracker now this tracker is fundamentally different than the old trackers however th the normal 2d tracker is better i'm not sure how did they make it any better it was already great but it's better okay now one of the biggest changes were made to the qualifier now let's just come to the qualifier here the qualifier have a new look just like everything else which is great but one of the biggest changes is that remember before we had an hsl rgb and luma qualifiers now we also have a 3d qualifier with the 3d qualifier you can draw certain paths on certain colors that you want to choose so for example i'm on the selector now here i'm just going to come to his face and i'm just going to draw this loose line and notice what happened here now resolve just selected this particular Particular color and there's a plus sign next to it so it's adding this color to the selection of course you can add more colors like if I just click again here and maybe draw another line here now a new color have been added so now I have these two colors that are being selected and if I just click on the minus button and maybe uh, draw a line here now I have a third color but with a minus sign next to it so this color is being excluded from the selection just gonna delete the, the last one and let's come here to preview and not bad this was really easy easy and fast to do. I'm just going to come here and select more colors. And this is a very good key, you know, just for a couple of strokes on the picture. It was really good. And you still have all the options like black clip, white clip. However, denoise have been split now for black and white. So instead of the denoise option, we have the clean black and the clean white uh, portions and the blur and an out ratio. Now, most of you are familiar with these controls, but just how easy Resolve is making it to pull this uh, very clean uh, key very fast is just unbelievable like um, I can simply just click here and uh, I have the path showing here uh, this is how I you know selected my colors so I can simply uh, uncheck this box here and it will disappear and now I have all the controls over my key so I can just change whatever I want to it okay this is too much but you get the point and of course I can add an outside node now and I can control the rest of the image without the key which is great let me reset and finally one of the small things you know that i absolutely love is this very small feature so i'm just going to come here to primaries i'm just going to click on one and this is my saturation control now i'm just going to click on saturation now and now i have this border you know around the number and it's 50 now so i'm just going to come to my numeric keypad and just type zero and enter and now I just, you know, desaturated the image. However, I still have this number selected. So now without doing anything else, I can simply hit 25 for 25 and just enter. And now I just reduce the saturation to 25 and I can see it. So I, I can control all these numbers only through the numeric keypad, which makes Resolve really easy to use. Like for example, I'm just gonna try to increase saturation this image to 70, for example. No, that's too much, 50. Still a lot, so 40, good, now maybe 30, okay, 35, great. So without fiddling a lot with the mouse, now it's very easy to control all these numbers, and this is just, I mean, for me at least, this is absolutely important. 
So um, these were the changes to, uh, you know, Resolve 12. Now, if you've joined one of the uh, DaVinci Resolve simplified courses before, like uh, DaVinci Resolve 10 or 11, you get a free upgrade now to 12 and you can have access to version 12 for free uh, automatically.